we have a date. It almost feels like yes. All right, guys, it's Sunday. It's our last day here in Houston, and I'm about to learn something. <laughs> There's a lot that I can learn from my mom, but today we're gonna learn a Christmas decorating skill. I have this whole bag of ribbon. We went to this Christmas store on Friday that I've heard a lot about from my mom and my sisters. They've been a bunch of times. I would never gotten to go because uh, it's kind of out of the way. It's called Picket Fences or Picket Fence. I was really excited that I finally got to go. We didn't really get anything but ribbon because today my mom is gonna teach me how to make Christmas bows. She has been making her own bows for a million years. She puts bows on the wreaths. She puts bows on the garland that she puts on her stairs. And also yesterday when we ran into craft text, the only thing I got was one thing of ribbon. This one right here, it's kind of like a goldy silver. You'll be able to see it whenever we get over to the kitchen table a little bit better. And then I also got one thing of twinkle lights for Mary because she has been asking about those. And I thought, hey, while we're there, just get those for her. I really wanted to get another set for myself, but I decided to not be over the top for once in my life. And so I just got one for her. So we are gonna learn how to make bows. If you don't know how to make Christmas bows, hopefully this is helpful for you. I know it will be helpful for me for sure. All right, we've got a big station set up with all of Mary's collection of ribbons cause she's gonna be making some bows. And then my mom is going to teach us. Well, she's not teaching us cause Mary already knows how to make them. For the new red and white tree, I'm gonna make a bow topper with this sweater material. This is huge ribbon. I think it's the biggest ribbon I've ever seen. And then I got some sort of sparkly red solid and then some narrow black velvet as kind of an accent with a big bow that I want to make for the banister. Sorry, it's totally not focusing. And then even more some candy cane narrow and then some pretty festive plaid. Grant loves that. And oh, that's actually it. That was a lot of ribbon. <laughs> And then Mary has a Santa tree going and this is my favorite ribbon that she got. Isn't that so cute? It's just like a classic Santa. So this is kind of the inspiration. We might have more or less different kinds of ribbon, but these are the ones that my mom puts on her stairs. And I love this red velvet with the gold accent. It's kind of heavy and it's definitely very long. And oh, she also has this little branch back here that's got glitter and a little bit of flocking makes it a little bit heavier, but it looks really, really pretty. So this is your, your middle. And then once you get it, wrap it around that way, then you're just twisting it. And it depends on how big you want your loops. Like if you have fatter ribbon, you'd want a bigger loop, but with this narrow, see you're holding it there and then you twist. And then you do a loop. And then you do your I get it the same size and then you twist and then each time you do a loop you just get it a little bit bigger and then it's just a twist and just keep twisting it under you see what I'm doing though just yeah keep twisting it under got a little wild over here and then you twist it I'm just gonna tie it right here we could measure that but then you put your tail on. So my mom likes to do hers with floral wire, but we noticed at the store, they had a lot of custom bows made and they use twist ties. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it through that part where you're holding it. Go through that. My fingers, I can't hold it good because they're so numb. <coughs> so get your wire out. And then you can use pliers or you can just do it with your fingers. So and then you just start twisting it. What you do is just pull it. It's very forgiving. Pull it around and to, to style it the way you want to be. Does that give you an idea? Makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Totally this makes not sense. the prettiest example. Let Mary show you how to do one and see how it comes out because she can hold better than I can at this point. I think it turned out pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary's going to get to work on her tree topper and she's going to show us a slightly different way to do it or kind of just double up the ribbon, I think, right? Well, yeah, I'm going to use three ribbons. Oh, okay. okay. I always just do my tail with it. So this is actually going to be the bottom of my bow. So I don't need a middle piece right now. Oh, the base layer. Yeah. Again, I have a ton of this ribbon, so I'm not exactly worried that I'm going to run out of it. 
So I'm just gonna do like two loops on each side. Yeah, that looks good. I love that ribbon. I'm gonna use wire, the floral wire for each of the pieces and then I'm gonna wrap it to the hot thing. Okay. So is this layer done? Yeah, I think so. You used to have bow making classes at Cornelius. That's where I learned how to do it. <laughs> you went to a bow making class? Well, that's how they sold ribbon, by teaching people how to make bows. That's awesome. And that's how I learned and I taught Mary. <laughs> One year I was a bow making manufacturer. When we moved, we wanted wreaths on every window. Well, I had made the bows for the wreaths. And yeah. Mary and I were out in the front yard making big red velvet bows. Oh. Do you remember that? You're probably child running, labor. You're probably running around in circles out there. Yeah, I was probably not part of the productive <laughs> okay. team at all. So this would be like layer one. So Mary used the floral wire on the first layer just so it doesn't get bulky. And she's going to use the zip ties at the very end to connect each layer because she's gonna have three bow layers all together. Mary has a new house and she's already been deemed the Martha Stewart of her street. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do my second layer which I'm going to do something solid in the middle so that I'm breaking up kind of these two patterns. Yeah. And this is gonna be the top one since it's the most fun. fun. It's gonna work. Make it work. Well, if it's on this the top, is Project Runway for Bows. Flop, you know. okay, I'm just gonna do two loops of this because that's all I got, but it's still gonna look good. All right, there she's got her middle twisted since this is gonna be the top bow. That looks good. And twist. The twist is like the most important part. If you don't try to twist it, yeah, it if you don't all... get it twisted, it's gonna come unglued. You'll have to start over. Yeah, it'll come unglued even after you put the wire on it. All right, we've got Sanibo done. Okay, so now she's layering them up. Put it in through the middle. Oh my gosh, it looks so cute. Are you happy with it? It's pretty. It needs a little styling. You've got to always twist them at the end to kind of... Twist them and puff them. Okay, so I've seen many examples now a triple bow a single bow and i just tried to practice a little bit with some narrow ribbon because a lot of mine are really wide and apparently that's a lot harder to work with but i'm ready to actually make one of the tree toppers this ribbon is going to be for the white tree i don't feel confident in my bow making skills just yet but we're going to try it Not the fun. best. It looks like your hair. It looks like my <laughs> hair. It matches your outfit. Let me show you. I think it looks better. It's fluffy. Very shiny. Okay, we're ready for the tails at last. My first bow will be done. So I just got a long length of it. Twist it here. And then go to the back of the bow. And find a good spot for it like that. And then you use more floral wire. Like so. This ribbon smells weird. Get it tight, tight, tight. Dad's coming in to save the day with a zip tie. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That was a close one. That was close. I could have lost an eye. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, my first bow is finally complete. It definitely reflects off the colors around it. So here next to the window, it kind of looks more silver, but in different light, it looks more gold or silver. And I think it's gonna look really, really pretty on the white tree. And I did get a little frustrated with this ribbon because it's, it's definitely a lot thicker than it seemed like it was on the spool, but I think it worked out. Looks pretty good. Now we can move on to the next bow adventure. the base layer of the banister bow looking good looking huge all right our next layer is going to be this plaid <laughs> of 
quick little interruption for the bow making factory workers. We're gonna have some fajitas. Okay, I'm back full of fajitas and ready to do the third bow that will go on top. It's kind of like the accent layer and it's a really pretty black velvet. It's sort of thinner, so I'm gonna do more loops. And Mary's working on more bows. More <laughs> bows. She's already got a big collection back there, but she's working on even more. Got my tails on at last, and we are using the zip tie to just seal the deal. Okay. My dad's here to get it as tight as possible. I put it on. Okay, so the banister bow is complete. This is gonna go on our short side of the banister where we don't have any garland or anything, and I'm just gonna hang it off the side. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Some of this ribbon was a little hard to work with, uh, but I think it came out nice. Okay, here are my three creations. They are large and they are in charge. So this one is going on the banister. This one is going on the white tree. It's super simple and honestly, I think the super simple one is my favorite out of the three. And then this is the last one. It's this really cool kind of like sweater material. It was a little bit hard to work with, but I love the effect and we did like a stripe red and white on top and this bow is super long because it's going on top of the new flocked tree that's in the front the red and white one and then over here here are all of mary's bows she did like 20 bows as i did three because she's a bow making pro i can't wait to see her tree all finished she has it up and she has her outdoor decorations up and they're all really 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 cute so i know her tree's gonna be really adorable come here miss franny say hello Oh, she's such a good girl. She's such a good Franny girl. We'll see you next time, Miss Franny Woo Woo. Can you jump up here? <gasps> Athleticism. Still kicking. Still grouchy. <laughs> All right, we are finally back home. It's like 10 o'clock. It took us a really long time to get home tonight because traffic was bad. There was an accident. It was just kind of crazy. It feels good to be back home. It was a really, really amazing trip. I love getting to spend that much time with my family. Usually we do like weekend trips. So you only have like one full day together and the weekend just goes by so so quickly and this trip still went by really really quickly but we had a really great time and it felt good to celebrate my birthday with them and thanksgiving of course i don't know it it does not really like feel like my birthday if i'm not celebrating it with my family and i guess i don't know maybe that's because my birthday is always so so close to thanksgiving so i'm always with them anyway and usually it's like a holiday and so you're not having like parties and stuff if your birthday's on Thanksgiving. But I can say it finally felt like my birthday celebrating with my family and my mom got the special blizzard cake and it was actually really, really good. <laughs> All around, it was just a really, really good trip, but I wanted to make sure I took time now to sit down and talk to you because I didn't take time through the whole weekend, but I have big news. I have really good news. So last week on Wednesday, my cycle started. And if you've been following along with all of my IVF updates, you know, that means that we're now on track for a transfer cycle. And right now on the calendar that they gave me whenever I went in on Wednesday, which was the dead last day to come in before the holiday, otherwise I would have had to wait all the way until tomorrow, which in my mind, it would have thrown off the schedule because like everything is extremely, extremely time sensitive with all of this. I, I was so happy that I was able to get in on Wednesday and they gave me a calendar and they have me set on the dead last day that I can actually go get a transfer before the lab closure. 
if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back a couple of vlogs. I talked to you guys about, you know, what we were up against and how it was like kind of a stressful thing because we we're just waiting for my body to cooperate so that we can actually start taking the medication to be on track to do a transfer. And we've never been through this part of the process before. So honestly, I don't know what kinds of things can go wrong along the way or what kind of twists could be ahead. I'm sure we have a lot to learn during this piece of the process, just like all the other pieces so far. But right now I'm just so, so excited because we're actually on the road to do a transfer and it just feels like it's here. It's finally here after all the waiting and all the hard stuff that we went through along the way with the egg retrievals and complications and stuff like that. Um, we have a date and it almost feels like yes. It almost feels like getting a yes. And, and I know we're still far off and there's a lot of things that could happen between now and having a baby, but this is a really hopeful step in the right direction. And I started an estrogen medication. That's the first one that I start. Uh, I started that over the weekend and then closer to the transfer, I start progesterone shots. And um, that's something I'm not really looking forward to. I've heard it's pretty painful. You do eventually get used to it, I've heard, but whatever. That's something for the future. Right now, I'm happy. I've started the medication and yeah, we're looking at a December transfer date and I'm just excited and I had a great weekend and good things are happening. But right now I need to wash my face, get into my pajamas and just go to bed because I am so, so tired. Uh, oh, on the way back, well actually on the way there and on the way back, we were catching up with the new season of Helen Gone and it's very interesting. It's season three. If you haven't listened to the first two seasons, I definitely recommend them. I really, really like how she does this podcast and uh season three i was totally out of the loop with i had no idea season three was happening anyway i think that's it for this vlog i'm excited to give you new updates as we go into this part of the ivf process it's all new to me i don't totally know what to expect i have like a rough calendar and very high hopes but i guess we'll just see together i will let you know if anything changes along the way or if anything big happens during the week i'll definitely tell you on my story i hope you guys had a wonderful holiday a great weekend and you're having a good week so far and i'll see you back here on thursday and next week and next week and next week <laughs> that should not be the new outro <laughs> anyway thanks i love you bye